Okay, kids, we're going to talk about another one. It's uh, a firefly indeed. And a couple things have happened to it already. I'll go through it really quickly. It's been here for about a day. You know, you look at this, say you only saw this much of it. You'd say, holy smokes, that's a handsome guitar. And then, you know, you got Aquaman's pants on. And you'd say, sir, that is a corny guitar. I would not disagree with you. I might even correct you and say it's goofy. But let me tell you how this came to be. A companion of mine, Christmas week, this was reduced to $130. And I had a coupon from Aaron. In fact, I had two, but I didn't remember that I had two until I pushed the dang button. This could have been 101 bucks. It ended up being 109 so that's plus $2,736 or $7 shipped. Who can argue? I'll tell you what it was like when it got here. There was a bit of a back bow in the neck. And action was set high to compensate for that back bow. Uh... Put on a set of 10 to 46s, set the action, well, the neck relief, then the action, and holy moly, not a single bit of fret buzz. Now, the thing that I want to talk about here, and let's see if I can get the camera, the plane of the camera lens lined up with this. So you can see what I'm saying. You can see the string alignment. So on all of these, and I don't know who tells them to do this. It's a little bit too far pushed to the base side. And then uh, you can see the string alignment over the pole pieces. And that's not an exaggeration of the angle of the, the lens. That is exactly the way that it is, and I'll show you why that is. It is because this bridge, which is something of a Nashville, it's a bigger body, zinc, I would guess zinc saddles. Definitely a zinc stop bar. This is a very old school, two inches E to E. So modern spacing will have 10.4 millimeter string pitch and then combine that with the string spacing at the nut and you're going to get your string alignment over the pole pieces of a modern set of 50 millimeter 52 millimeter pickups but this bridge is for the original 49.2 millimeter in the super old school or reproduction Gibson. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Hopefully you can see it. Let me switch hands here. Oh, the shadow that's getting away. Uh, really, it's, it's pretty impossible. Well, no, not really. So you see this pickup cover? This is a 49.2 or 49.5 millimeter uh, pull piece. Obviously for a, you know, like a single coil P90 style or similar. So oddly, this bridge is kind of like a combination so it's got ABR1 posts and um, a kind of a fat Nashville body 
Um, if you have one of these guitars, and I'm um, extremely curious now about the Les Pauls and this kind of a string alignment thing gets your uh, OCD fired up. There's a few things that you can do. You can find a set of pickups that are 49.2 or 49.5 millimeter, right? Uh, Get Gibson's one of the options that I'm thinking about in terms of pickups once I replace these is a 490R and a 498T. If I can find a set that's reasonable, you know, USA Gibson pickups, nickel steel covers back with the uh, old school pole spacing, then okay. I think, however, what I'm going to do, because I I want an aluminum stop bar, and Clusen makes an aluminum stop bar with really high marks, um, from that particular vendor, I'm pretty sure it's Sport High Tech, Exeter, Pennsylvania. You can find them on Reverberate. I'm going to get the Clusen ABR1. All the intonation spots are fine, so I'm not really going to need that super long travel. I hope I don't. Um, it's uh, flathead screws that are uh, held in place by a wire retainer. These screws are not held in place by anything, by the way. Uh, if you adjust the intonation on this bridge, you're going to have to be mindful. Because if the screw head pops out, you're going to have to sort of whack it back in. Boom! It knocks the screw back in to the the bridge, the, the the end of the screw is just held in place in a, with a, a hole. So it's not like the Goto, which has uh, little hex nuts that are a part, a solid part of the bridge that hold the screws in. Or, you know, an old school ABR1 wire or the various ways that this is taken on with the, the Nashville Bridge. Um, what else can I tell you? I popped the chrome-plated brass covers off of these sock pickups to see if they can behave a little differently, if they get a little bit more oxygen. Uh, they have short screw pole screws, not a fan. Brass, back plates, Definitely not a fan. Uh, this one, even without the cover on, is a bit microphonic. Let me see if I can find a cover that I took off. Yeah. And the covers were not microphonic. However, however they're doing this, because it doesn't look like a, a full pot, but the cover's not vibrating against the studs, against the pole studs, or the sides of the filister head screws. <clears throat> it's this coil that's not sufficiently potted. I don't really mind. Um, this is, as you would expect it, right around 8K. This is 14.5K. So the pickup combination is a sort of... Typical hot peppers combo. Um, I don't know. And that's what I'm curious about. Anyone is welcome to uh, comment on suggestions. I'm thinking something along the lines of just slightly overwound you know, early to mid 60s type, just over eight, close to nine, Alnico five, very nice, very decent, 
maybe pull the five magnets and put sand cast on the co fives in. I've always wanted to try uh, an unoriented Alnico 5 magnet in the neck. The bridge that I mentioned I'm going to get has uh, brass saddles, but it's in a cast zinc frame, so I don't know how that's going to make a difference. The posts and wheels that come with it are brass, but the good thing about that Clusen ABR1 that I'm going to get is that it has no notches filed in the saddle. So as well as the nominal 10.4 millimeter string pitch, um, I'll be able to move slightly. So if anybody doesn't know how that works, you um, either sacrifice a set of strings or you uh, put some old strings on with uh, saddles that don't have grooves cut in them yet. If you can put wound strings on all six, set yourself up, get your string spacing where you want it to be relative to this line of pole pieces, and then you smack that. You can smack it with the brass head on a, on a hammer or a hard plastic head, however you do it. You smack the string and you make a mark in that saddle and that is where you will then file your groove. The way I've done it in the past is uh, I always run 9 to 46 or 10 to 46. Depends. I'll take the um, 46 nut file and also make marks along the flat side so I don't go too deep. But honestly, I basically go one, two, three, four on each one of these three. Then I will take the, um, you know, 10, 13, 17, the um, 16 or 17 gauge nut file and do the treble strings in exactly the same way. You need to be mindful, careful, patient, and make sure that those grooves are all the same depth or you're gonna mess up the radius of your saddle. That's pretty much the easiest way. And this is almost a contender for top wrapping. The high E string was touching this edge of the bridge, but I don't think that it's going to touch an, an ABR. I'm a huge advocate of top wrapping, but if the bridge is not high enough after you've set your string action, it's not. And here's another tip. Take it as you will. Uh, People who complain about top wrapping complain about this uh, grommet wrap at the end, emerging over here and getting bent and unwinding and being all hairy and horrible. Take the grommets off an old set of strings, thread them onto your new string, then put the string through. You'll see your own grommets emerging on this side, but what will happen is you will get the, you you won't get any of that uh, you won't get any of that grommet wrap emerging from this side of the bridge at all. It'll be um, it'll be a hard it'll be a, a obviously it'll be like a ninety degree you know hard kink in the string right there. But. Um, what else am I going to do? So I'm going to have, for my $109 guitar, I'm going to have a Clusen aluminum tailpiece, an ABR1 with a wire retainer and solid brass saddles, zinc body, brass posts, brass wheels. Um, let's see if we can talk about 
this end of the instrument. If you are curious about uh, a string butler, my suggestion would be to get the V2, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have all the string, well, you know, and while we're down here, I can talk about the string spacing on the nut, which is really, really important for uh, the alignment geometry down at the business end of the guitar. So you, you can see everything has been pushed to the bass side and kind of mushed together. The benefit of this guitar is that it it actually or very nearly has a 43 millimeter nut. So if I get really goofy with the string mechanics of the whole situation, I may actually put in a zero fret. Don't know. But as I was talking about a string butler, so your your through hole on your post is so close to the top surface of the bushing nut. The string butler that you're gonna wanna get is the V2, the one that lives over the uh, truss rod access hole. Because the other ones have these little forked deals that live underneath. And even if you re remove the washer which I don't know if that's advisable or not on that version that is pointed in this direction. You're not going to be able to get strings through, especially the low E. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what's happening here. I'm not sure if it's the Pan-African movement. Rastafarian 335 or the OG Pride Flag, although we are at, we've quite officially, you know, as a detail minded motherfucker, we would be missing a stripe of purple down here at this end. But I'm down with, I'm down with the OG Pride Flag guitar. That might be how. I have to justify appearing in public with this thing.